Hello to everybody. We will wait a few more minutes in case someone else wants to log in. Buenos días a todos. Vamos a esperar unos cinco minutos más eh, a ver si alguien más se une a la conferencia. Sí. Por eso te dije que nos dijimos que eh, pasa que en base a las mejores familias. Y si tú le tienes Bueno, 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 pero es muy molesto que se consulta. Sí, pero es muy molesto que se consulta. Sí, pero es muy molesto que se Bueno, luego... Sí, pero es muy molesto que se consulta. Sí, pero es muy molesto que se consulta. Sí, Hello to everybody. Uh, we will start now this uh, conference. Uh, this is the presentation of the proposal uh, 2015 uh, number two, interior transfers. And um, this instance is uh, for the author, in this case, David Huberman, to present uh, his proposal and for the community to have the opportunity uh, to ask any questions and to start this, this to continue this, this discussion, we have started in the mailing list. 
um, this this conference will be uh, in English because it's the author's language, but any person can ask um, in Spanish and we will help with the translation. Uh, okay. Uh, buen, buenos días para todos. Um, esta presentación es de la propuesta eh, LAC 2015-2 de transferencias eh, interrir. Eh, la idea es que el autor presente la propuesta y que después eh, quien quiera pueda hacer cualquier tipo de pregunta, eh, le puede preguntar lo que quiere. Eh, la, la conferencia va a ser en inglés, que es el idioma del autor, que lo va a presentar, pero de todas formas se le puede hacer cualquier pregunta en español y nosotros vamos a ayudar a traducirlo. Eh, bueno, ahora le, les, les paso este, le paso el micrófono a David Huberman y él va a empezar a presentar. Eh, la idea es que primero le presente y una vez que termine eh, se le puede hacer todas las preguntas. And now I will um, pass uh, the the word to David. Uh, he's the author of this proposal. He will present it, and then uh, we will have time for any questions uh, that can come up. So, David, you can speak now. Buenas uh, tardes, everybody. Thank you for uh, Janina and like Nick. Thank you for organizing this session. Um, I have submitted policy proposal 2015-2 for inter-RIR transfers. The original purpose of the proposal was to have LACNIC join ARIN, APNIC, and RIPE and allowing blocks to move into and out of the RIR so that networks, which operate on multiple content, continent, can move their space to and from RIRs as the network uh, needs. Um, the text is on your screen. Um, I used the uh, format of the LACNIC policy manual and working with friends from other networks in the region, uh, I tried to make this uh, as uh, to conform as much as possible with the LACNIC policy manual. Um, once it was presented to the policy mailing list, uh, concerns were brought up uh, that this policy would allow space to leave the LACNIC region. Um, since the only point of the proposal for real was to allow organizations which are growing in the Latin America region to have space registered in LACNIC, um, that's used on the continent, uh, I indicated I was absolutely willing to just make this a one-way policy where blocks can only come into LACNIC and never leave. Uh, to do that would require some policy work at the other RIRs, which require reciprocity. Um, but as the author, I think, I would like the community to consider this as a policy that allows space to be moved from APNIC, ARIN, or RIPE into LACNIC for use in the LACNIC region. Uh, to do this, I will need to remove the second to last clause, 2.3.2.x.7. I would have to remove that. Um, and, and that is my proposal as it stands. Okay, thank you, David. So you can uh, raise the little, the little hand you have there if you have any questions for David. Now, uh, ahora quien quiera eh, puede hacer preguntas a David, pueden levantar el dibujo de la manito o o pedir la, para pedir la palabra para hacer cualquier pregunta o opinión que, que tengan que quieran expresar.
Okay, well, this was uh, this proposal I saw in the mailing list. It was very discussed. People have different opinions about it, and maybe uh, someone wants to to express one in favor or opposed. Esta política fue bastante discutida en, en la lista y habían eh, personas a favor y en contra. No sé si alguna de las posturas quiere expresar su opinión. Puede hacerlo. Acá hay una pregunta. Here there's there's one question. Uh, it says it's from Juan Alejo and it says David. Uh, David, sorry. David, and uh, you for your present. Thank you for your presentation. Could you give us an example of an organization that has this particular issue? the need to use resources from other regions here in Latin region? Uh, Juan, thank you for your good question. Um, so the origin of the policy proposal was for my own organization, Microsoft, which uh, builds software and services and devices which now just operate on the internet, Skype and Xbox and Office 365. Uh, my, I created this because my organization is spending many, a lot of money to build data centers in the LACNIC region. We have no address base from LACNIC. Um, uh, we uh, have a very large market share in some of the products we offer. So as we expand our internet presence, um, I would prefer as the IP addressing person and my organization, I would prefer not to use ARIN or RIPE addresses in LACNIC. Um, I would like to move those addresses to the LACNIC registry. I spoke with some of my colleagues at some of my competitors. My competitors include uh, companies like, uh, like uh, Yahoo, Google, Amazon, Facebook. Um, I, I don't know if I can speak to their names specifically, so I won't, but some of the other organizations who have cloud products and um, user software um, that uses the internet to connect uh, are also expanding in the LACNIC region. Um, so uh, I can speak to Microsoft One, but I, I don't feel comfortable speaking to another organization's needs, uh, but I do believe uh, based on my conversations that there are other organizations that need these. Um, one of the criticisms uh, that was made by someone who spoke in opposition to this policy was it's only for the large networks. Um, and I agree with that. I think right now uh, what I know of internetworking in the world uh, is that it is uh, larger networks which have multiple continents that they operate under. Um, and so speaking as a large company, Microsoft, um, we hope to have a very, very large presence uh, in South America uh, in places like Brazil and Chile and Peru and Mexico. And uh, we would like our address space that's used in those data centers to be registered with the appropriate RAR, which is in this case LACNIC. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Juan, do you have something else to comment? Okay. Uh, well, then, I don't know if someone else has any questions. I've also uh, uh, picked some lines from the conversation in the mailing list. Maybe, David, you have something uh, to say about this. Uh, I, I took some phrases which were discussed, for example, 
it said uh, delay even more. Someone said delay even more IPv6 deployment or well, massive outflow of IP to other regions. That's what you have already commented. And it's also some. Someone also said something about dividing uh, the transfer policy problem into two policies: one inbound global and one outbound. Uh, I don't know if you want to make any comments about those prices. Uh, thank you, Gianina. Um, the IPv6 comment is an interesting one. Um, we, as a, as, a, as a global internet, we absolutely have to get to IPv6. We don't have any choice. Um, and the thing is, not all of us can control what our users bring in terms of a connection, in terms of a network stack. Um, today, in 2015, by some measurements, 6 to 7 percent of global traffic is over IPv6. And while we all will work together to move that to a higher number, um, there are real needs to get to IP to in uh, to provide IPv4 connectivity to users today and over the next year or two or three. Um, Alex has asked a question in chat about does this publication have a direct relationship with the real need for Microsoft today? Um, and the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we have data centers opening in South America or already open and being staged. Uh, and we're using space, uh, we have no choice. We have to use space from out of the region. Uh, we would like to move space into the region. Um, so the, IPv, the IPv6 is, is a very real issue. It's a very tough issue um, for those who are not service providers, for those who are not ISPs. Uh, who can't offer, who don't offer connectivity directly, whose customers bring the stack to the connection, um, we, we, we need to give them V4 as well, at least for a few more years. Um, and then the other criticism which we talked about was massive outflow, uh, very, sens very sensitive and respectful of that, uh, that opinion. Uh, and as I said, absolutely willing uh, to just move this to a one-way transfer and work on the reciprocity issues with the other RIRs. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, Alex, maybe you want to talk. I don't know if that answered your question. You can speak. Ah, okay, so Felipe has another question. You can speak, Felipe. You have to click on the microphone to speak, to speak because you're in mute now, Felipe. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I actually asked some questions in the chat, but uh, what are the potential problems that you foresee in using space from another RIR in the LACNIC region? Uh, thank you, Felipe. That's a very good question. Uh, the primary reason has to do with geolocation. I've been working in IP addressing for 16 years now, and one of the problems that has been around for a very long time is we have, we have hundreds of organizations which provide databases for geolocation. Um, you know, the best examples you know, when you go to Google or to Bing or to Yahoo and you wish to search for something, it uses the geolocation database to try and figure out where you are and present you results in your native language and that are relevant to your region. Um, as a content provider, uh, my company is very sensitive to geolocation issues and we work very hard um, to make them work better. So. One of the ways we can do that, one of the fundamental ways geolocation seems to work is the IP address is looked up in who is. So if we use an ARIN address in a Santiago data center, it will get geolocated in America when if it was registered in LACNIC, it might be geolocated better in Santiago. That is the primary technical uh, achievement that this proposal would do uh, in the context of your question.
Thank you, David. Felipe, do you have that answered your question or do you have something else to comment? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, Ricardo, you have now the word. You can ask. Thank you, Janina. Just regarding the geolocation uh, issue that David mentioned, I, I, my opinion is that it's an orthogonal problem it should not be addressed by a, a location policy. Uh, geolocation uh, is, a, is a bigger problem than just um, uh, something that could be solved by this inter-IR uh, proposal. Uh, we have uh, another big issue with the geolocation with the, with the use, massive use of global, global carrier NAT. So uh, the problem should be addressed in other way, not by this policy to allow inter-IR transfer. Thank you, Ricardo. David, do you want to comment something? Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I respect uh, and in many ways agree with uh, okay. Ricardo. Okay, now Scott, you have the word, you can speak. Scott. You, you can speak now. Sorry, I was unmuted. I was muted two ways. Um, a question for Ricardo. Do you believe that, um, that the, the fact that geolocation is also a problem that should be solved other ways is an argument for against registering the addresses with the RIR in which they are used? Do you believe that um, companies operating in um, the LACNIC region should be using addresses from outside the region, or do you believe that they should be using addresses that are uh, brought in and registered with LACNIC? Uh, my opinion is that geolocation is not a problem to be solved with inter-IR. We, we, we are aware of other problems that need to be solved regarding to geolocation. So uh, I'm not in favor of using geolocation as a, a, a justification for inter-IR. So, but my, qu I'm my question is, geolocation, geolocation aside, do you believe it is more appropriate for addresses that are actually being used in LACNIC to be registered with Aaron or RIPE or to be registered with LACNIC? My, 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 my opinion is that LACNIC is to have IP address that can, 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 uh, can address the needs. We, we are allocating in this um, schema now for almost one year. We have big corporations, data centers, telecommunication uh, companies that are doing well with the, 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 the current policy uh, schema we have. So I, I don't see at this moment to, the need to have inter-IR transfer. If we, if we take, for instance, APNIC, APNIC only starts to have this type of policy after they, they depleted the, the, the last slash aid. Same thing in RIPE. Airing was a different scenario. But my, my, my proposal is, my, 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 my opinion is that we, we don't need this, this type of policy now. And uh, we, we, with this policy, we cannot avoid outflow of IP, if, if someone pay attention to what's rap, rap, happening at RIPE community now, there are, there are a lot of cases where shell companies are being started just to receive uh, a slash 22 and then transfer this to other organizations. So it's risky for our, our community to have this type of policy at this moment. So may I respond? Um, so the the current um, policy in LACNIC allows for a for obtaining a small block of addresses. Um, the the size of block that um, these large cloud, cloud providers need is um, larger than a slash 16, sometimes much larger. 
Um, LACNIC simply does not have the addresses free uh, under current policy to give them to these providers. So I, I don't understand how you how you propose that we solve that problem. If if there are not addresses under the current policy to give to these organizations, um, what do you propose that they do instead of getting addresses elsewhere? I understand this. Uh, as I said, I, I think uh, there are companies, I, I'm aware of a lot of companies in Brazil, in the region, that, that are doing this type of service, starting new services, and they are doing well with this size of the allocation. They are returning each six months to receive more, um, doing hard work with IPv6, and we, we can see this uh, through statistics how IPv6 is growing, the, the usage of IPv6 is growing. And um, at this moment, I think the, 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 the address policy we have can, can address this, the, the, the immediate need for these companies. I, I believe that you're talking about two different scale of company. There are small cloud providers who can number their, um, their NATs or their, um, their machines out of a 22 or 21 or 20. Um, who are indeed satisfied with the current policy, um, when you have an organization that needs a thousand times that much addresses, um, then it, it seems impossible to me to try to meet their needs with the current austerity policy. The other um, comment I would add is that um, you expressed concern about addresses leaving the region. Um, I definitely share your concern about people spinning up multiple organizations to get addresses and then transfer them. But um, under what David is proposing, um, he wants to change the proposal to only allow addresses to come into the region and not to leave the region. So there, that would, I believe, address the concern of addresses leaving the region. Do you believe that um, simply allowing transfers into LACNIC and not out, would that address your concern there? Maybe. I, I don't have an opinion now. It's not the proposal being discussed, but maybe. But as I guess Luis Balbinu mentioned, this will be incompatible with the other RIR policies, so uh, hard work would be needed to yeah. have similar proposal in RIP, aiding and APNIC. That's the reason I'm on the call, is because um, I'm very involved with the Aaron policy process, and um, I would be happy if LACNIC wishes to do this in only one direction, I would be happy to propose the, um, the modification to the Aaron policy to remove the word reciprocal and allow addresses to be um, transferred to LACNIC without requiring addresses be um, able to be transferred out. I think that is a that is a change that um, that we could get consensus for in the Aaron region, and I would be happy to propose it if that's um, what the LACNIC community wants in order to allow transfers in. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I don't know if, uh, Ricardo, you, do you have something else to comment? If not, uh, I have here one question from Alex Ojeda, and he says, what do you think about the side effects of these policies in which they may have malicious trying to profit from resources and that this will make them more luc lucrative, not? So I tried, uh, Alex, very good question, thank you. I tried to um, account for this in section X.4 and X.5, um, where if an organization moves resources into the region, into LACNIC, they are ineligible to get IPv4 allocations or assignments from LACNIC for one year, and the block cannot be transferred to another organization for one year, um, including sub-blocks. Um, th that's what I've tried to do to allay those fears, Alex. Thank you, David. Alex, do you have something else to comment? You can speak if you want to. 
He says fine, thanks. Okay. Someone else has something else to comment? Alguien más quiere comentar algo? I guess, uh, Giannina, I'd like to say just one thing. Um, okay. Um, the, I do not have the statistics on how long the current austerity policy will be in effect. In other words, how much space, how many 22s will continue to be issued for how long. But if the community is more comfortable waiting on this until full run out, then, um, you know, that's certainly, as the policy author, I'm certainly willing to put that stipulation in there that this policy goes into effect at exhaustion. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, well, uh, I see no one else has something to say. So, well, thank you very much, David, and thank you, everybody, for participating of this conference. We will continue the discussion on the list, and it will be, this proposal will be presented in our next event in Peru, so we can uh, continue with this discussion. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, David, for this. So, goodbye, have a good day. Thank you.